It is better that you should rush upon this blade than enter the circle with fear in your heart. How do you enter? Hello witches. Welcome back to the channel. This is Hectarios. I hope that you come here with love and with trust with faith in your own path, in your own choice, in your own practice. Faith in anything, truly. Anything that you do, anything that you're doing. This energy is vital because it is the fuel and the passion and the vitality of life itself. I hope you come to my channel with that energy and I hope that you receive that from my channel. I'm going to show you all this. This is a new journal that I got. Believe in your own magic. Okay. You better. <laughs> I found this at the dollar store. It was the only one. It's just a journal with line pages. But I cannot wait to fill it up with beautiful, magical things. And I just wanted to share it. Believe in your own magic. Have that faith. Just believe. Okay? That's a beautiful message. And it's true. Okay, which is, it is eclipse season. Do you know that? It is eclipse season. We're about to experience three eclipses in a row, back to back. So, that's the real reason I'm making this video. It's eclipse season. Okay, which is July 12th is the first eclipse that triggers or kicks off this three eclipses back to back. July 12th is a partial solar eclipse in Gemini and a partial solar eclipse is when the sun is partly covered by the moon, the silhouette of the moon. So that's what's going to be happening. All solar eclipses happen at the new moon or the dark moon. So it's that rebirth energy. And when that energy combines with the sun in an eclipse, in a conjunction, it amplifies its power because the moon rules our internal self, our spiritual self our emotions and the sun rules our outer appearances, our ego, our, you know, self that we are to the world and that we show to the world, our light that we shine out to the world and that energy that we radiate out. And so when these energies combine together, it's a rebirth on all levels. So this first eclipse, solar eclipse on July 12th, is happening in Gemini. And Gemini is an energy of communication, travel, business, contracts, um, exchanges 
exchanges of energy on all levels, whether that's spiritual, whether that is business, whether that is communication, messages. This energy will experience a rebirth. So there might be many breakthroughs in that in those regards, in those aspects. And there might be some endings and new beginnings in those areas as well. And how you interact with these things and with these energies. Okay. Then on July 27th, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, on July 27th, we have the full moon eclipse, which is a blood moon, a full moon eclipse, a total full moon eclipse when the moon passes through the shadow of the earth, through the center of the earth's shadow, the darkest part of the earth's shadow, the moon turns a bloody reddish brown color. And these are known as blood moons. This one in particular is occurring in Sagittarius and it is also conjunct the planets Saturn, Pluto, and Mars all together in this area of the sky and this blood moon in particular is going to be the longest blood moon of this century of the 21st century um, the totality period will essentially be two hours long so you know this is a powerful energy. This is a powerful eclipse. Um, there has not been an eclipse this long in 100 years. So, or rather I should say, in this century. It's the longest eclipse of this century. So, that's a powerful energy. That means that the transformational vibrations that it brings about will be longer lasting, will be more potent. And what's ironic is that this full moon is also going to be Hecate's ascension out of Hades or the underworld, um, the final energetic gateway of her return and ascension to the physical realm from the underworld realm. So I think that that is very fitting. Um, Sagittarius is an energy of kind of newness. Um, it's a very Jovian Jupiter energy. It's about expansion, increase, um, higher spirituality and education, philosophy, religion. Um, so I think it's very fitting as well that this eclipse is occurring there and that it is aligned with Hecate's ascent. Um, this is a very beautiful energy. So after After that, the next eclipse that we have, the third eclipse, is going to be on August 11th, the next dark moon. And this is a, also a partial solar eclipse, and this is happening in the constellation Leo. So Leo is pretty much the zodiac sign that is the same energy. It's ruled over by the sun, so it's also about your ego identity the self that you present to the world um, and those type of things, that energy, those characteristics and aspects of ourself. Um, so when I say ego, it's not in a negative sense. Everyone has an ego. 
Um, it's just your personality when you relate to others. That's what your ego really is. Um, of course, in the modern, you know, spiritual movements or whatever, everyone is against ego and they think it's so evil and dark, but um, the reality is that your ego is necessary. It is simply just a part of your consciousness that you cannot get rid of. It, it's part of who you are. It's ingrained in you. Of course, there's negative and positive traits to your ego identity and your personality um, and your characteristics and behavior, uh, behavior patterns that you can seek to become self-aware of and master. Um, but it is part of who you are regardless. So I don't understand the bad rap that it gets in modern spirituality but that's beside the point um now what's interesting is that these three eclipses also correspond with some other events that are going on so for example the july 12th partial solar eclipse the first eclipse in this little triad of eclipses um that is on july 12th Thursday, July 13th, the next day, um, the new moon is actually a Friday the 13th. So that's just a nice little tidbit that it's sort of in conjunction with that energy. Then on the July 27th total lunar eclipse, um, first of all, we have Hecate's ascent sort of lined up with that. And then also we have the fact that the Sabbath Lamas or Lunasad is happening pretty soon after that on August 1st. So I thought that was another interesting tidbit that these energies are kind of interconnected to. And then on the August 11th partial solar eclipse, um, August 11th or rather August 10th through 13th every year is a sacred time period to goddess Hecate um, so this eclipse on August 11th this partial solar eclipse is happening within that time period so I think that's very interesting as well all of these eclipses are sort of tied in to like other sacred days and events and energies um, I kind of just wanted to share that in this video um, to get you inspired and get you thinking about it now I also am going to be doing some uh, particular rituals on the blood moon specifically which actually let me pause this so I can grab my grimoire so Here's my grimoire. Um, the spell that I have planned for this blood moon, I have already actually done before. And so I'm kind of redoing it, uh, revamping it up because I've done it before on a previous blood moon back in 2015. So I'm kind of, like I said, just revamping it for this particular blood moon. The Conjuration of the Witch Ancestors. This is the ritual that I'll be doing on the blood moon. Okay. The Holy Dead are the ancestors of all. Um, which is the spiritual ancestors of your lineage. Um, not necessarily your blood relatives, but more so just, you know, all dead practitioners of the craft and of these different spiritual practices. So this ritual entails calling upon those spirits and um, sort of bringing them into your life to work with you and be present in your life 
and be around you and to aid your spells and your life in general um, and in particular it brings forward from those souls who are willing 13 souls that will bind to you and become as your familiar spirits um, through this work in particular uh, they don't replace any of your other familiars but it just sort of adds to your spiritual team and to your spiritual allies so I did this spell before back in 2015 during one of the blood moons and um, it was very potent I had great success and results from it um, and I actually I ended up breaking the spell or undoing it or whatever you want to call it um, in 2017 uh, actually pretty much like a year ago from now um, last July I basically broke the spell and I undid it um, because I could feel its energy waning so I went ahead and just released those spirits and released that contract that spiritual contract because that's what the spell is also it's a spiritual contract with these 13 um, which ancestors in particular so this year since there's another blood moon happening I decided I'm going to redo this spell and you know add to my spiritual team and my spiritual allies once again so that's what I'm doing I'm going to be working on this um, with a select number of people if this appeals to you or sounds interesting to you I do invite you to contact me through the means in the description box my email or my Facebook page or through Instagram get in contact with me and I will share the full ritual with you so that you can also do it on this coming up blood moon you don't want to miss out on this because this ritual can only be done on blood moons so uh, to me I'm pretty sure that this ritual is going to become the staple of my practice um, you know you cast the spell during the blood moon and then it sort of wanes over time and so it's necessary I think to recast it um, when another blood moon does come up that's how I view it this is a ritual that was given to me in Gnosis by goddess Hecate so it's very powerful and potent magic and I did share this ritual with my students before already so I hope that they have made use of it or are going to make use of it now that there's another blood moon coming up but if you want this ritual get in contact with me and I will let you know the price and all of that for it and all of the details I will send you all of the instructions and details that you need so that you can prepare for this ritual um, now I'm sharing that in this video because some people have asked me what are my plans for the blood moon so that's my plans for the blood moon if you would like to be involved with that contact me now another couple things I wanted to talk about in this video is basically one thing that came to me as a message to share make sure that you are cleansing your talismans make sure that you are charging them and cleansing them frequently okay it's not enough to just cleanse your talismans okay so here's one of mine my personal talismans okay so this message came to me cleanse your talismans frequently they absorb energy okay you can charge 
your talismans. You can charge them with energy. Um, they're receptive. They're susceptible to energy. So also, too, they absorb energy at random. Just wherever you're around, whatever energies are around you in your aura, your talismans can pick that up and absorb it. So make sure that you cleanse your talismans regularly and frequently and keep charging them frequently as well. Um, some ways to cleanse your talismans, pretty simple. Set them in a dish of salt, kind of bury them in it and let the salt absorb the energy and ground it, neutralize it, okay? Also, some other cleansing methods. You can pass the talisman through sage or palo santo or some incense that has cleansing properties. Kind of give it a spiritual bath in the smoke um, to cleanse the vibrations. Another method is to just get a big piece of selenite and set your talismans on top of the crystal. And selenite has very powerful cleansing properties and anything that you set on it or touch to it um, is cleansed and purified. So those are some simple ways that you can cleanse your talismans. And talismans can be in your rings, all of your witch jewelry. Um, so make sure that you're cleansing your talismans regularly, okay? And then you're going to want to make sure that you're charging them up. Most people charge their talismans by setting them in the moonlight or setting them in the sunlight and letting them absorb those energies. Um, that's fine and well, but I like to charge my talismans with spell work. So one thing that I like to do is take like a fixed or take like a jar candle, a seven day jar candle and you know, write on it, write on the glass, or just take a candle and inscribe it with different spells and words of power, um, whatever it is that you want to charge your talisman with. And then what I'll do is I will take the talisman and sort of like wrap it around, if it's a necklace in particular, I will sort of just like wrap it around with the chain around the candle. On the outside of the glass and set the main part the stone down to where it's like touching the bottom outside glass of the candle and I will let the entire candle burn with the talisman wrapped around it like that and that is one way that I charge up my talismans with a lot of energy because the seven day jar candles will burn for several days and all of that energy will go into the talisman. Um, another way that I like to charge talismans that's kind of unconventional is I like to hang them outside when I know that there's going to be a thunderstorm or hang them in my window or set them in my window or set them outside when I know that there's going to be a thunderstorm and that all of that energy, that raw primal energy from nature will charge into the talisman. And one other way I wanted to mention that I like to charge my talismans that's kind of unconventional is set them in a garden or directly on the ground outside or even bury them and let them absorb. This is also cleansing too. It can cleanse and charge at the same time even. Um, but letting them absorb that earth energy is very good. Um, one more simple thing, of course, this is not that unconventional, it's actually quite common. Consecrate your talismans with your blood. That gives them a lot of energy that binds them to your energy, to your will. So, you know, that's something that you want to do. Um, you can feed your talismans a little bit of your blood regularly as well to keep them charged. But still cleanse them. Keep cleansing them regularly. Keep cleansing them frequently. And keep charging them. Keep empowering them. It's very important. I do have another topic to discuss, but I'll save that for another video. Because this one's getting kind of long. 
so that's basically it I just wanted to share that information about the eclipses and I wanted to kind of touch upon the talisman thing because that's a message that came into me recently so hopefully you learned something from this video hopefully this inspires you and helps you in some way and if you would like to participate in the blood moon ritual contact me through the outlets in the description box like I said so thanks for watching I hope that you utilize this eclipse season and let it transform and reinvigorate you and your path and your spirituality and your magic and you know even if you don't want to participate in the blood moon ritual that I'm doing I do suggest that you do some kind of ritual or magic that is um, aimed at revitalizing your magic and your spirit in some way okay so there's my little tip for this eclipse season thanks for watching please rate the video please leave me a comment Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already because there's lots more videos coming with a lot more information. That's going to be all for this video though. Hail to the witches, hail Hecate, and blessed be.